Good morning, everybody. It is time again for At Home with APS. I'm Ms. Jacobson. We've got a lot of fun things planned for you today. Um, before we get started, though, I wanted to give you a heads up about a project that we're going to be doing in another week or so. And you're going to need to save some supplies and find some supplies around your house to do this. We're going to be making a marble run. And what a marble run is, we'll talk about later. But the things you'll need to make it are things like um, paper towel and toilet paper rolls. You could also use the roll out of a gift wrap, a roll of gift wrap, wrapping paper. You could, if you don't have you know, those, you could also use like boxes. Um, this is aluminum foil box, and you could um, ask your grown-ups at your house to save these for you. Um, you could also just use like parts of an old cereal box, and we can show you how to make tubes out of the cardboard that's in these. Or in boxes or things that you've had delivered to your house, this came out of something that someone ordered from one of the company, online companies. And so we just saved this because this might make a good piece when we start doing our marble project. So start saving some things that you think might work um, that look like this, that are cardboardy, kind of soft, and can be cut with scissors. And, um, and then we will be working on that in a couple of weeks during our math and science days. I think it's on Thursday um, next, next week and the week after. And so make yourself a little place where you can start saving them, and then we're going to need those for that project. So make sure you tell a grown-up to save those for you, and you can be responsible for keeping track of where they are. So let's go ahead and uh, put on your thinking caps and let's get ready for At Home with APS. And we'll be right back. Good morning, phonics friends. Welcome back. My name is Miss Rachel and I'm here for first grade phonics. On Monday, we um, practiced the magic E spelling and I told you that we are going to make a sight word book today. So I thought we'd continue where we left off and get started with that sight word book. So I showed it to you on Monday. Mine is small. Um, and so you're going to make the same exact thing. And I'm going to teach you how to make the folds and the cut. Miss Maggie taught this way back in week one, so you might remember how to do this. But I'll walk you through it step by step. For this activity, you're going to need a piece of paper, a pencil or something else to write with, and a pair of scissors. Make sure you ask a grown-up that it's okay that you use the scissors. While you're getting your materials ready, I want to remind you that our videos are available on YouTube. So if I'm going a little too fast for you or you miss a step, remember you can always go back and rewatch. So we're going to start with our piece of paper, and we're going to fold it hot dog style first. So I'm going to put the long edges together and fold down the middle. And then I'm going to take my paper and hold it nice and long, and now I'm going to do a hamburger style fold to put the short ends together. And we're going to do that same fold one more time. So you should have a small rectangle like this. Okay, and now we're going to unfold everything so that we're back to a big piece of paper. And you should see that you have eight rectangles. Now we're going to make another fold, and it's going off of a crease that you already have. So we're just going to take our big piece of paper and do a hamburger style fold. Like this. Okay. Now I'm going to draw a line for you so you can see where we're going to make our cut. You don't have to do this, but if it helps you, you can. Notice that when I'm holding my piece of paper, I've got my open side facing away from me. 
we're gonna be cutting starting at the fold. Now, it's important that you don't cut all the way through or we're gonna end up with two pieces of paper. We wanna keep this as one piece. And we're gonna be cutting from the fold to the crease. So it does not go all the way across. Make sure when you hold your scissors that you cut away from your body to be safe. So there's my cut, my paper's still intact, and now I'm gonna unfold. So you'll see that made a cut just right in the center of our paper. Now we're gonna repeat our first fold, which was a hot dog style fold, okay? Now I'm holding the edges of my paper and I'm going to kind of push them in. You might have to help it out a little bit. Let me try folding the other way. There we go. So if you're having a hard time pushing in, try your hot dog fold the other way because what you want to happen is for those pieces to push out. And then you'll just help those folds and make everything really nice and flat. Okay, and then I just folded it back into my small rectangles. Now you have your very own small book. And we can add your sight words. So since we didn't have this last week, I thought we should start by adding our sight words from last week, and then we'll add our words for this week. Now, you can decorate the cover of your book however you'd like. On mine, I wrote Miss Rachel's Sight Words. I'll let you do that part later. We're gonna open up our book to the first page, and we're gonna write two words here. Do you remember what our sight words were from last week? Don't worry, I've got them right here. Our first word last week was were. Can you say were? Great. I'll hold this up while you're writing and I'll say the letters out loud and you can record it in your book. W, E, R, E, were. And I'll do the same in my book. So I wrote it a little bit small there and I left space for my next word. Our second word last week was R. Can you say R? Great job. I'll say the letters again for you. A, R, E. Now I have my sight words in my book. Now on Monday, I introduced three new sight words for you. You might have made a chart with me like this on a piece of paper. If you did, that's great. You can copy your words down. If not, don't worry. I've got our cards here and I will say the letters for you as you write. This word was friend. F R I E, N, D. I'll add that to my book too. Our second word this week is other. You ready to write it? O, T, H, E, R. Other. And our last word this week, if you just wrote other, you can copy that down again because this word is another. And it has the word other in it. So you might start by writing the word other and adding an A-N on the beginning. I'll spell it for you. Ready? A-N-O-T-H-E-R. Another.
So if you followed along with me, your book might look something like this. My cover's still blank. I haven't decorated my new book yet. But when I open it up, I can see my first week's words and my second week's words. You can keep this nearby when you're reading or writing and use it as a reference or just to help you keep track of some of the learning we've done here together. Now, we are gonna continue learning about Magic E today. And on Monday, we practiced a little bit of the spelling pattern for Magic E. Today, we're gonna practice reading and finding that word. But to get us warmed up, I thought we should do a little bit of vowel stretching again, if you remember that from Monday to get us thinking about those long vowel sounds. So I'm gonna use my chart back here from Monday where we have our letter keyword sounds. But this time I'm gonna make you think a little bit more. I'm going to say a keyword and I want you to make that vowel with your body. Okay, so think about which vowel do we use for the keyword Pine. I, right? And we make a really tall, strong body. Great job. What about which vowel do we use the keyword peat? E, right? And that one, that's a tricky one to make. You have to do some balancing. You might have one leg out and your arms stretch sideways. Good. Okay. What about the keyword safe? Which vowel do we use for that? A, right? And I like to make a big, strong triangle with my body to think about a capital A. Okay, what about the word mule? Which vowel can you make for the word mule? U, big, strong arms. Good. And the last one, think about the word Home. What vowel stretch can you do for home? Oh, it's kind of similar to our U. I feel a little bit like a ballerina when I do that one. Nice job, friends. So I've got a word of the day for us today before we start reading so that you can get used to seeing that pattern as we read. My word of the day is brave. Can you say brave? Where have you heard that word before? What do, you, what do you think it means to be brave? I was thinking about how many brave people we have in our world, especially right now. I'm thinking about brave doctors and nurses who are helping sick people. I thought about brave people who go to work at the grocery stores to make sure that we can buy food. And that made me think that the word brave means that you do something that might be a little bit scary, but that you get through it anyways. And when I sound out this word, I see that I've got a blend at the beginning, brr, a, a long a sound, v, brave. I don't hear the e at the end. That's because e's doing his job to sprinkle magic dust on the A. Now, I'm gonna teach you how to mark this word to help us visualize that pattern a little bit. If you're doing this with me at home, you can copy this word down and mark it with me. If not, that's okay, you can just watch today. So when I mark a magic E spelling, I'm going to mark the vowel by putting a V I'm gonna show where my consonant is, and then I'm gonna write that letter E, just like this. Vowel, consonant, E. So you'll see this looks really similar to our chart over here, but I wrote V for vowel instead of letting you know which vowel I have here. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is cross off the letter E in my word. That's to help me remember when I'm reading, I don't sound out that letter. 
And finally, I'm going to draw a line above the letter A to show that it's its long vowel sound. Now when I read the word, I'll remember to make a long vowel sound and not sound out the E. So if you wrote this down with me, that's great. Hang it up somewhere in your house to help remind you about the magic E spelling, but also about all the brave people we have in our world. Now that we can see that spelling pattern, let's practice reading a story. I think you guys are gonna like this one today. My story is called Whale Friends. And I want you to read with me at home. I'd love if I could hear you. Oh, I heard you. Okay, great. So that means you can read along with me. Now, we're going to read the whole story, but then we're going to go back and look for magic E words. And you can help me at home, okay? So I'm going to guide us with some paper here so that you can follow along with me. The title of my story is Whale Friends. What do you think is going to happen in this story? I don't have any friends that are whales. Hmm, maybe it's about other whales being friends with each other. We'll find out. You ready? Kate the whale was very small. She had a lot of whale friends. They liked to ride the waves. Kate went to play a game with her friends. So she went to hide in the ocean. She dove down deep. Her friends could not find her. They even asked another whale have you seen Kate? But Kate was not lost. She did flips and jumps until she was back with the other whales. They all swam and had fun. Great job, readers. I was so proud to hear you reading. Now, let's go through the story and hunt for some words with magic E. And if you were paying extra close attention, you might have also caught some of our sight words in that story. So you let me know if you see one of our sight words and I'll make sure I circle that too. But let's start by looking here at the title, Whale Friends. Do you see something that follows our magic E pattern? Whale. Look at the word whale. I see it ends in an E, and there's a long A sound. W -a -o. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that word. What about the word friends? Is that an important word for us to notice? It's one of our sight words, friend. So when I see a sight word, I'm going to underline that. Good. Now, I know that whale was in this story a few times. So I'm just going to go ahead and circle it whenever I see it in this story. Like, I found it again there. And there it is again. That's it on this page. Now let's go back, and I'll use our guide here to help us. Look in the first line here. Kate the whale. Do you see another magic E word? You do? Great, Kate. And then we'll go to the next line. I don't think I see any there. Lot of whale 
friends. Oh, I should have underlined that one again because we already identified that as one of our sight words. Nice job. Now let's go, we're gonna look at this line here. They liked to ride the, I see two words with magic E. One of them is hiding a little bit. I see ride right, right away. That one was easy for me to find. But what about the other one? What if I cover up this D here? Do you see it now? Great. The word liked has magic E. It just tried to trick us a little bit by adding that D on the end. Now look at this sentence. Do you see another word with magic E? I see two of them. One of them we found already was Kate. And the second word? You got it, it's waves, nice job. Okay, and on our next line, I see one word. Game, very good. Okay, I found our, an, our sight word again on this line, friends. So I'll underline that. And in our last two lines, I see two magic E words. Can you find them? Good. Hide and dove. They both have the magic E spelling. Great job. Now, we're just going to go through and look for our sight words. I'm going to show them to you one more time. Another and other, okay? Because you guys have already done such a great job. Look at all of these magic E words that you found. So on this page, you let me know if you see a sight word. We found friends quite a few times, so I'm gonna go ahead and underline that. And then I will help you find the next one. Another, great job. So we'll underline that word too. So we're still missing one more sight word. On our last page, hopefully we'll find the word other. Can help me look for it, okay? Do you see it? I'm gonna help guide you there. Do you see the word other? Great job, we'll underline that too. So now as you think about this story, who were the characters in this story? Kate was a character and her whale friends, even though we didn't have a name for them, but those were the characters. What about the setting? Where did that story take place? In the ocean. Right? Can you think about what an ocean looks like? Yeah, and we know that they were jumping in waves, so I can imagine a picture of this story for myself. Maybe at home you want to draw a picture of this story, how you imagined it. We know that Kate was small. Do you think she was smaller than her whale friends? Maybe you can draw a picture of all of them playing together, their hide and seek game. Where did Kate hide? I'd love to see your photos if you decide to draw about that. We have a, just a little bit of time left. So I want to go back, since we, I didn't think we were going to have time for this, and practice our letter keyword sounds for our glued sounds. So remember, our glued sounds are sounds that are easy to blend together, but you can also pull them apart. And our chart shows the NG sounds on one side and the NK sounds on the other side. So I'll say the letter keyword sound and you repeat me, okay? A-N-G, hang, ang. 
ing ring ing. ONG song ong. UNG lung ung. ANK bank ink. INK pink ink. ONK honk onk. UNK junk unk. Great job. Now friends, the rest of your lesson today, you're going to see Miss Maggie and Miss Q, and they're gonna talk a little bit about animal feet with you. So I hope to see you again soon, and I will be back on Friday. Thanks for learning with me. Good morning, literacy learners. This is Miss Maggie, and I'm back with you today to share a wonderful story that I borrowed from Miss Rachel. We are going to continue our work with living things. I have a special book to read aloud for you today. It is called, What If You Had Animal Feet? It was written by Sandra Markle, illustrated by Howard McWilliam, and published by Scholastic. As I read this book today, I'm going to show you how I determine the most important information in a book. I know that in a nonfiction book, the author will give me a lot of information. I will show you how I stop and pay attention to different parts in the text, such as headings, captions, images, and diagrams, in order to figure out the important ideas. One thing that I would like to mention for our families today that may be watching is that this nonfiction text does include an owl on pages 16 and 17. I will let you know before I get to this page when the owl will be present in the story. That way, you can skip ahead in the YouTube video. Also, as we go through the story, a repeated phrase is going to come up again and again. It is the beginning of a sentence and will help us connect to the text. That phrase is, if you had, will you read that with me? If you had, I'm going to be referencing this phrase many times in the book. I would love for you to read it aloud with me when we get to that part in the story. This is the book, If You Had Animal Feet. What if one day when you woke up and climbed out of bed, the feet you planted on the floor weren't yours? What if overnight a wild animal's feet took their place at the end of your legs? The Eastern Gray Kangaroo. An eastern gray kangaroo's hind feet are super big. Just the sole of an adult's foot can be 18 inches long. Big feet help a kangaroo jump about 30 feet in a single hop. Each huge jump means a kangaroo can cover a lot of ground fast. Eastern gray kangaroos live in groups called mobs. When one kangaroo senses danger, it thumps its hind feet on the ground to warn the others. Are you ready for the phrase? Here we go. 
If you had eastern gray kangaroo hind feet, you'd be able to jump as high as six feet. So you could reach high shelves with ease. Housefly. A housefly's feet have tiny claws for gripping. Plus, they have foot pads covered with hair-like parts that give off a gluey substance. So a fly sticks where it lands, even upside down on the ceiling. A housefly's feet are also covered with sensors that act like your tongue's taste buds. So a fly can taste what it steps on. Are you ready for the phrase? Here we go. If you had housefly feet, you'd be a basketball superstar. You could run up the wall and across the ceiling to drop the ball through the hoop You'd never miss a shot. Green basilisk lizard. A green basilisk lizard's back feet have long toes fringed with skin. This fringe spreads out when it slaps its foot down. When it slaps its foot down on water, air becomes trapped under each toe. And when it runs fast, this keeps the lizard on the surface for at least 15 feet. When it sinks underwater, a green basilisk lizard, fringed toes become great swim fins. Are you ready for our phrase? Here we go. If you had green basilisk lizard feet, you wouldn't need a bridge to cross a stream. And you'd be on the other side in no time. Cheetah. A cheetah's foot is made up of soft pads, a center one, and toe pads, plus nails. Shaped like that, it has a new name. Instead of a foot, it's called a paw. A cheetah's paw pads are tough and rigid like tire treads, and the cheetah's sturdy nails act like cleats. So its paws keep it from slipping during super fast sprints. These amazing paws help a cheetah run as fast as 70 miles per hour. That's faster than any other land animal. A cheetah's pattern of foot pad ridges are as unique as a fingerprint, which means no two cheetahs have the same pause. Are you ready for our phrase? Here we go. If you had cheetah feet, you'd be on time for school every day because you'd always catch the bus. Hmm, I notice that many of the images or pictures are about feet. I also keep hearing the word feet over and over again. I think that will be important. Gray wolf. A gray wolf's feet are called paws too. When crossing snow, a gray wolf's toes separate and stretch apart. That makes its paws bigger and like wearing snowshoes, 
spreads out its weight. This means its paws don't sink in as deep, which makes walking or running easier. A special network of tiny blood vessels helps keep the wolf's feet warm, even on ice. Here we go. If you had gray wolf feet, you could play barefoot in the snow and still have toasty, warm tootsies. Duckbill platypus. A duckbill platypus has skin connecting its spread apart toes. This type of foot is called a webbed foot. The platypus's front feet even have skin that sticks out beyond its toes, making them the perfect swimming flippers. But the minute it starts to walk, dig, or scratch, this skin pulls back so the platypus can use its sturdy, sharp nails. A male duck-billed platypus's back feet each have a spur-like nail to inject venom, a poisonous fluid. This isn't deadly to humans, but it can be very painful. Ready? If you had duck-billed platypus feet, you'd be a fast swimming superhero with a built-in weapon. At this point, students, we're going to be moving to the owl on the next page. If you are one of our diverse families watching, please feel free to skip ahead in the YouTube video. Barn Owl. A barn owl's feet have four toes tipped with talons, which are long, curved, sharp nails. Usually, three of its toes aim forward and one backward but it can swing a second toe on each foot to the back. This helps keep an extra tight grip on wiggly prey, such as rats or mice. A barn owl's middle front toenail on each foot has a tooth-like edge. It uses this to comb the feathers on its disc-shaped face. Flat feathers funnel sound into its ears so it can listen as well as watch when hunting for a meal. Ready? If you had barn owl feet, you'd never have to bend over to pick things up. Aardvark. Each of the toes on an aardvark's feet ends in a sharp, sturdy toenail. The front ones are shovel-shaped. These are great for digging a burrow for their home or finding ants and termites, its favorite foods. If attacked by a predator like a lion or leopard, an aardvark digs a burrow to escape. If caught, it flips onto its back and lashes out with its nails. Are you ready? If you had aardvark feet, you could dig super fast, which means you'd be the first to find buried treasure. Hmm. I think these parts of the text are interesting because the author always tells me about the animal, but then tells me what I could do if I had feet like that animal. That will probably be important too. Duck. 
giant African millipede. A giant African millipede's body is made up of segments. Hmm, what an interesting word. A baby starts out with just four or five segments, but as it grows, it adds on more. Each segment has about four feet. An adult may be 40 segments long with lots of feet, and it needs every single one. It can travel by tunneling through the ground. So while some feet are busy walking, others move dirt out of its way. A giant African millipede has an exoskeleton, meaning the hard parts of its body are on the outside. So to defend itself, it curls up with its delicate legs and feet inside and its armor outside. The mountain goat. A mountain goat's foot is encased in a hard nail-like covering. Shaped that way, it has a special name. Instead of a foot, it's called a hoof. Can you say hoof? A mountain goat's hoof is split in two halves, and each can move separately. That lets it get a good grip in rocky, high places. Each half of a mountain goat's hoof has a sharp edge plus a rubbery pad. These add extra grip to keep it from slipping. Ready? If you had mountain goat feet, your feet would be all you need to rescue a kitten. White rhinoceros. Each white rhinoceros foot is like an elastic pad plus three stiff toes tipped with hoof-like nails. With each step, its foot pad presses down, spreading the toes wide apart. This lets the rhino's feet support its heavy body, and it needs the support. Adult rhinos can weigh as much as 7,000 pounds. In spite of their size, white rhinos can run as fast as 30 miles per hour, but only over short distances. Ready? If you had white rhinoceros feet, your family wouldn't need a car because you could carry everyone all at once. Wild animal feet could be cool for a while, but you don't need your feet to grab food, run on water, or stand upside down on the ceiling. And you don't need your feet to stay well-groomed or taste what you step on. But if you could have wild animal feet for more than a day, which kind would be right for you? What an interesting question. Luckily, you don't have to choose. The feet at the end of your legs will always be people feet. They're what you need to run, walk, dance, skip, hop, and even just stand in one place. With the right footwear, you can do lots more. Plus, your feet can look very stylish while you're being active. Hmm. I think the author thought it was important to talk about people feet too because she could tell us what our own feet could do. Next up, we're going to have Miss Q sharing a wonderful K-1 connections to this book that we just read. I hope you learned something exciting and new. Have a wonderful day. Thank you and welcome back.
That was such a fun story that Miss Maggie just read us, and it made me start to think about what I could do if I had some of those feet. Do you wonder why flies have taste buds on their feet? What if we tasted things that we stepped on? Would that be a good experience or a not so good experience? Probably not so good. But when I think about what flies land on, it makes a little bit more sense. Then I started to think, what if I had cheetah feet and could run that fast? I think that would be a very good experience for me. So today, we're gonna think about what we could write a story about using some of those prompts. If I had cheetah feet, I could beat all my friends in a race. What kind of a story could you create thinking about feet of some of the animals that Miss Maggie read or any other animal that you could think of? Another thing that I started to think about is if I had dolphin feet, I could swim through the ocean and that would be one of my favorite things to do. So what could you do with an animal feet that you chose? So many different ideas. I hope that you will think about writing a sentence or a story about having some of those animal feet. If I had any animal you choose, feet, what would you be able to do? And why would that be such an adventure for you? Then I started to think about that fly and those feet, if I had those feet, I don't think I would want it. So what if I had fly feet, what could I not do? What would I not want to do? That could be an entirely different story or a different sentence if you wanted to try and write that for yourself today. So what if you had goat feet? Would you climb a mountain? Would you run through the streets? Would you be very good at swimming through the ocean? Hmm. If you had any animal you want, feet, what could you not do? What would be really challenging or not very fun? If you had duck feet, you probably wouldn't want to go into the ice like the polar bear. But if you had polar bear feet, I bet you also wouldn't want to be walking through the hot desert and it would be very impossible to fly like the fly. That just made me think of some fun ways that you could do a writing project in your home. Either a sentence, maybe you even just want to draw a picture and write what the animal is. So many choices for being able to write. Now, Miss Maggie talked about lots of different animals with feet. Some of those feet were big and some of those feet were super tiny, like on the fly. So I thought it would be a lot of fun to take my foot and see what my foot could be bigger or smaller than. At home, find a piece of paper Either use your shoe or your own foot and trace around your foot. You might want to ask a grown-up to help you if you can't do it by yourself, but I bet you can try. Then ask a grown-up to help you and cut out your foot. Here is my foot. I made it on a yellow piece of paper. You could even use a magazine or a newspaper. Anything would work. This is the size of my foot. I think I have a pretty big foot. I even wrote my name on it. Now, I went around my house and I found a bunch of different things. And I want to know, is my foot longer or bigger than some of the things that I found around my house? Or is my foot shorter or smaller than the things I found. There's one more choice. Is my foot the same? 
or equal to some of the things that I found around my house. Now, my bucket of things, it's all crazy stuff. I'm sure you can find some fun and crazy things around your house too. So the first thing I found is one of my favorite books. Now, is my foot taller or shorter than my book? My foot is taller than the book. You could also say bigger if you wanted to. Or longer. So many different describing words. What about this orange pipe cleaner that I found? Oh, they're almost equal, but my foot is shorter or smaller than the pipe cleaner. I have so many more things in here. I found a hanger. This is a big hanger. I wonder what my foot's going to do. Is it going to be bigger or smaller? My foot is smaller than the hanger, or it's shorter. But I wonder if I turn the hanger this way. Oh, then it changes. And my foot now becomes longer than the hanger. So many different ways that we can measure using our feet around the house. I made a Lego tower. This Lego tower is taller than my foot. But I found something special. If I take off just one piece of my Lego tower, now my foot and the Lego tower are equal or the same. They can be the same in both directions. I wonder if you could find something around your house that your foot is the same as. I have a few more objects here in my box. I have a pencil. My foot is definitely bigger than the pencil. I also have a bigger book. When I measure with my foot with this book, they're almost the same, but the book is a little bit taller than the size of my foot. I think it would also be fun to find other people in your house and see if they'll let you take a measurement of their foot. And you can see who in your family has the biggest foot, who in your family has the smallest feet, and do any of you have the same size? That would be another fun thing that you could do in your house. Here's a water bottle. Let's see. My foot is definitely taller than the water bottle. I have a few more objects in here. This one was fun. It's a ruler. Is my foot the same as the ruler? Nope. It is shorter. But something fun to be able to do is I can see exactly how many inches my foot is on the ruler. And now I can say my foot is 10 and a half inches long. And now I know that using this ruler, I can use a real measurement for some of these items as well. If you have a ruler at home, that would be a fun activity for you to be able to do as well. I wonder if you have pets or animals at your house and you could measure their feet too. A foot is such a fun thing to use as a measurement tool. You can measure how far something is using your feet. You can see a shadow outside and see how many feet it takes you to get across, and then start to come up with ideas of things that your feet can do, just like the animals in Miss Maggie's book. Today we had so much fun learning some sight words, reading stories, and hearing about animal feet. Hopefully you can go home and also use your foot to measure some items around your house. And remember to write that story about if you had animal feet, what could you do? Thank you for joining us today with At Home at APS 
And we hope to see you again tomorrow for some more learning. Have a great day.